Hello friends, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Music in Our World. Uh, I am super, super excited about this episode. I finally got a chance to sit down and talk with my friend Ben Miller about, you know, music, life, being a musician, being an artist, inspiration, that sort of thing. Um, it was so much fun, as it, as it always is, whenever Ben comes around. Um, we just kind of, we chilled at my place, and he brought his organ and some of his sound equipment, and we uh, had a little improv jam. He's got his, his infamous looper. Um, so that'll be kind of probably a separate video slash Instagram uh, post that will go up, because that was a lot of fun. Um, but he's, he's a very insightful person. He's a very talented musician. Uh, and it's just, it was a pleasure to talk with him. So I hope that you enjoy the episode. And, um, you know, if I'm, I'm hoping that one day he, he sort of creates an, an internet presence that I can plug him and, and promote everything uh, good that he's doing. Um, but we pretty much, we talk about a lot of our, um, a lot of our joint musical endeavors, and he's he's a good dude, always playing out. So, um, my friend and super talented keyboardist, guitarist, vocalist, you know, it's just all around good musician. Uh, and actually, Ben plays trumpet. I didn't know that before the episode, but um, we were we were kind of messing around with my with my instrument collection. He's like, huh, let me see if I can still do this, uh, and picked up my trumpet and had this crazy clear and solid trumpet tone. I was like, man, of course, of course. But uh, just super, super excited to, uh, to talk with Ben. So I hope you guys enjoy the episode. Audio is hard. It's not as hard as I make yeah, it. Yeah, I, I understand how it, it is probably a very typical part of listening to a podcast. Is can you hear it? <laughs> like, like, yeah, I mean, I think uh, we'll it just may get really close. To the it podcast. may be like it may be it may be the only part of it. It's, um, <laughs> it's a large, uh, integral uh, linchpin of the entire uh, medium. <laughs> cool. I love how it gives me like. If I forget, I'll turn off like a, the count in. Yeah. Or sometimes even the metronome, it'll like count me in to do like a podcast, which is fun. <laughs> um, Does this record like omnidirectionally, or are we pointing? Yeah, it? it's actually oh. sounds pretty oh, okay. pretty solid. The little little blue snowball. Yeah. I had one that used to have different modes. Um, oh, but I remember that. This yeah. one just has the one mode. Is it just like that direction? It's like cardioid. It's a. It's a wider angle. Like, okay. it's getting me just fine from where we're at. All right. Which is surprising. Hello. 
but we could also. Shouldn't we like put it in the like facing, face us. facing us? I was gonna. I was. I had it. I had it or, uh, oriented to face the uh, speaker, but now we're, oh, now we're good. It'll oh, yeah, it'll yeah, get yeah, enough yeah. of that. Yeah, that sounds pretty. But it'll be inverted. <laughs> the polarity be, will be inverted. It'll be man. backwards, right? Yeah. No, I mean that's the thing. I mean, no, I know. Yeah, but this, is, this doesn't really matter. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, we've, we've got the audio, you know, going-ish. Um, yeah. if you're... Does it have the signs in the background now? Yeah, uh, we're going to have to probably fix that, but... <laughs> or it's not, it's, it's, we go hard in the woodlands. It's our right. world. The music is in our world. <coughs> the sirens are also there's, in our world. There's music in sirens, absolutely. Um, well, we're going, if you've, if you've clicked on this or had it downloaded, uh, <laughs> on your device. Uh, you know, my name is John Patty. This is the Music in Our World podcast. Uh, I'm joined today by Ben Miller. Hello. Hello. Um, and we've been kind of wrestling with uh, a couple of different... We've been wrestling with my audio interface, which is 10 years old and may or may not be compatible with any computer I've ever owned, but uh, we've reverted to Old Faithful, which is my, my blue snowball. Uh, we've also been sort of playing all the instruments at my house and some that been brought. Yeah, so. I don't know they made plastic trumpets, but they do, and John has one. That's I have a awesome. plastic trombone too. What? That's yeah, awesome. it's one of it's. I mean, they're cool. If you don't mind an instrument, it's like <laughs> eight or nine cents flat on everything. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty neat. But uh, so no, Ben's got his organ, the keyboard. Yeah. It's like the size of a. Extended loaf of bread. That's the best description I've heard of the size of an instrument. Yeah, it's really little. And I have it plugged into a little amp that's the size of, well, an actual loaf of bread. Sure, yeah. yeah. It's got a... I'm, I'm going to post photos because this is this is all very fascinating. And... Tabletop music. <laughs> but, uh, what's it? So, do you still do your Friday Night Live Jam things? Uh, yeah, it's not always on Friday, sometimes it's not even really at night, but <laughs> uh, late night jams happen, oh, I keep kicking the, the table, late night jams is a thing that happens on Twitch on the channel, hey Ben Miller, all one word, because that's my name, it's Ben Miller, so it's just like, hey Ben Miller, which is what people say, because people use my first and last name a lot, uh, so it just kind of went with that. Yeah, yeah. John Patty is, yeah. is, is the same way. Do you really do that, John Patty? People use your first and last name, John Patty. <laughs> yeah, it's just this, those kinds of names, you know. Anyway, uh, yeah, I play a keyboard or maybe like four keyboards all plugged into a mixer <laughs> with loops late at night, and you get to watch a live video stream of that and comment things at me, and I might, you know, answer the comments or take suggestions for moods like. Someone suggested space vampires as a mood, and so we made synthy sounds and also vampire-sounding chords. That's that's what I do <laughs> late at late at night. What is a vampire-sounding chord? <laughs> it would be like like these two, like oh. it's got like melodramatic, sure. and then you fix a little beat behind that. Then you get, you know, they're in a rocket ship or something. So. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly. Okay. I mean, that's, um, I'll post a link to that To Like, that's one of my favorite things if I, if I'm able to catch that. <laughs> um, cause like, I don't, it's, there's very few times on the internet you can like send someone a meme video and they're like, okay, let's incorporate that into. Oh, right. Music. Right. Where, yeah, there was, I need to do more of that. I used to do that more where people would send weird YouTube videos and I would record those with the looper so you know somebody saying why are you closed could get looped into why are you closed why are you closed nice little rhythm yeah that's always fun to do on the fly <laughs> yep that's what I do late at night although lately I've been actually playing gigs for real people I mean they're real people on the internet but you know <laughs> in person yeah. so I've been doing more of that uh, I might actually have to do like mid-afternoon jams now instead of the late night jams thanks to uh, going out and doing more real life gigs and also some real life dating which is like oh Aww. 
don't have to stay up and just play music all by myself anymore. That's fun. <laughs> That's good. That's those are two things I've been. Um, I mean, I always think about those things, but especially lately, um, is you know gigging and sort of partnerships and interpersonal mm-hmm. relationships work life balance <clears throat> yeah and that's actually i mean that's exactly how i've phrased it before i know it's i guess it's a I guess it's a thing um, but what kind of what kind of gigs are you are you doing what are you what are you up to uh, well what's going to happen very soon is a lot of christmas caroling gigs i'm in a a cappella christmas caroling group and so we've been rehearsing, adding some new Christmas carols, which is exciting. Like we're doing the Wexford Carol this year, which I'm very excited mm-hmm. about. Uh, kind of a Celtic sounding. Uh, let's see, what else? I'm playing with a guy named J.P. Kendrick tonight, actually. So probably no late night jams tonight. Uh, he's a cool guy. He plays acoustic guitar and covers a lot of awesome songs that I had heard but maybe don't know really well. And so I'm going back and learning like all these. 70s sounds which which is really fun to do uh that's the best way to expand your repertoire is like be forced to learn things for a gig yeah i'm also doing some lunchtime gigs with the guy named john batty hey. on thursdays and occasional tuesdays uh at like corporate uh lunch cafeteria type food court look it looks like a food court in a mall and they have musicians every thursday and sometimes we're the musicians uh usually i bring the looper pedal to that and then uh, it's nice to just loop all the melody instruments, and uh, John Patty just takes care of all the beats. And we stay together either with like a click from <laughs> a tiny, like something like like this coming from the looper, which hopefully doesn't interfere too much. With it. Or maybe I'll actually play something in rhythm, and then we can just listen to that. But usually we have to listen to that. So it's like a two-man band, which sounds not as cool as a one-man band, I guess. But <laughs> it, it's cooler, trust me. <laughs> Especially with the it's cooler with the live with the drums being live, I think. Well, and with you know with with loop stuff too, it can sound like four or five people playing. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. But that's I, I that gig has been <clears throat> really cool. It's it's kind of an excuse to get in the city, even though I don't really <laughs> like being in the city, but. Um, you know, I've I've recently recorded. We'll, we'll post here in a couple of weeks uh, my my travel episode of of the of the podcast, and where it's even though it may not be your favorite thing, or the cities you go to may not be good, um, <laughs> <laughs> may not be good, uh, or I don't know. Being there is not as bad as getting there with that's Houston true. in particular. That's um, true. But it's I think it's good to expand your horizons, and that's a good kind of safe environment. Um, but. <clears throat> One of the th- I've, I saw uh, a video by this dude named Eric Carr, and he was t- talking about um, can a can a bad gig like ruin your reputation? And I thought that's a really fascinating <laughs> thought because I've done some really bad gigs, <laughs> um, and I think just with with the advent of social media, like and you if you post like everything, you could just easily not post about that one thing. <laughs> Like, well, yeah, what's the answer? Can a bad gig ruin your reputation? Well, I, I mean, I think it, I think it can, like, but only for who, the people who are there, right? Right. Like, <laughs> unless you like, unless it's like it's a bad gig in that you like blew up the building you were working with, but hopefully right. Okay, that's, okay, okay. But um, you know, I, no, I've I've played some gigs, and I, I wouldn't say necessarily that I regret them because they put money in my pocket. But uh, what's what's going to be so bad that you couldn't just not? not talk about it or not do that gig again. Right. I would say, I mean, when you're saying bad gig, it's, you're probably something like the music didn't sound good, right? For right. For whatever reason, whose ever fault it was, you know, you can blame the sound guy. The sound guy is blaming the fact that, you know, you didn't have all your pedals, you know, gain stage the right way or something or whatever. I don't actually know that much about guitar pedals, but <laughs> <laughs> they did something. They were plugged in where the lights were plugged in and the sound was bad because right. of that. And uh, no matter... I don't know. I feel like that's pretty forgivable and pretty easy for people to not remember. <laughs> if it's a bad gig where it's like some kind of social human drama happens, like, you know, the drummer starts getting in a fight with somebody or right. throwing things into the audience, oh, uh, might be more of a problem in that case. But yeah, other than that, as long as you're like 
being respectful and behaving. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't think any, I don't think anything's <laughs> too. I don't think anything could go so horribly wrong just from sound. The the example in he he gave a he did a video. He's got a really cool video series on YouTube, and he's a percussionist drummer. Um, he's actually in the uh, Commandant Zone. Uh, Marine Corps Drum and Bugle Corps. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he took kind of a similar path before he went that direction um, as me, where he like arranges for high schools and marching band stuff. And I think the, the example he gave, like being a bad gig, was he wrote for a school that I think he was teaching at and then no longer was for that season. And so the kids at some points just like stopped playing. <laughs> and so the judges were like, why would you write this? this way why why would the front ensemble not be included in this and i was like man i was thinking about that as an arranger right, someone right. asked me it was like well first of all what do you what's the point of asking the composer after the fact but second like if you're a judge you gotta know there's like high school kids playing they're gonna freak out they're gonna forget their music so they so the, there was a question from the judges as to whether or not he wrote now just stand there and do nothing and look scared or right. if they just stopped playing and look and got stage fright or whatever or yeah. got lost. Yeah, and the, okay. the judges were were I guess under the impression that like he wrote that I don't I don't I just can't see that I've I've judged marching band contests before and I'll be like, oh that wasn't a very successful lick. <laughs> Maybe they're thirteen years old. And yep. you know, I'll just be like, okay, they, they didn't hit it that time. I bet they'll get it next time. Um but that, I mean, I guess the analog for like performing is, um, I've, I've done gigs where the set list wasn't made clear and it was oh, like, yeah, yeah. all right, let's play this song. It's in 13, 16 and H minor. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. like, <laughs> you all, you all, you all know your Led Zeppelin, right? Here we go. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that, that to me is the analog that, I mean, I guess. Like train wreck kind of stuff. Yeah. Like... And it, I think you can kind of tell as far as like a bad gig, um, you can kind of tell if someone was given ample time to prepare and mm-hmm. like if they're like fumbling through a song and you you never see them like lay in a beat or you <laughs> never hear them hit a chord at the right time, it's like, okay, this person may not be very good. But if you like, if someone's like really got a groove and like they miss one of five hits or something in a song, right. I'm like, ah, oh, they may <clears> just, <throat> I know the idea that like the cover gig thing is kind of hard. Yeah, yeah. If, as long as like, as long as you're you know trying to find that audience connection and you have good energy or at least an energy that's matching the room or enhancing the mm-hmm. ambiance, then uh, <laughs> yeah, people people are are pretty forgiving. I mean, you know, try to hit the the right notes, obviously, but uh, as long as as long as you don't let like one bad note like mess up your head it'll just be one bad note yeah <laughs> if you keep thinking about it then uh you're going to be thinking about that while you're playing wrong notes or into the wrong part of the song and it's going to turn into a lot more bad stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> gotta uh, figure out how to like amputate that one <laughs> or like yeah. a, a tourniquet off <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that one part of the song and be like i'm not thinking about that and i i think that that goes kind of into you know performance practice just in general whether you're prepared or not, that should be kind of your your standard mo. Um, but I don't know. I, I thought that was an interesting topic, and yeah, um, I I think the the way he kind of came to a conclusion, I think I probably differ a little bit, but it was still really a, a, a fascinating idea to, yeah. to think about. Um, I've also been considering too, like um, for for gigs. Um, I don't know. I'm curious your thoughts. Do you do you like playing like original music, completely improvised stuff, or like a set list, play covers, and, and have that sort of structure? Oh, that's interesting. I never thought about like those three options before. But it's like something you wrote and you practice and prepared original music, mm-hmm. something you're pretty much making up right there in front of everybody, which is what that's what's that called? Imp- improvisation, mm-hmm. yeah. Totally improvised, and then covers something you prepared, but somebody else wrote it and probably everybody knows it and mm-hmm. you're just doing your own spin on it uh gee i don't know i mean i like doing all three of those things uh when you have a looper it's pretty fun to do the improvisations because you can just keep adding things until it gets too much and then you undo <laughs> <laughs> like oh, let's let's undo that uh i don't know there's something there's something really fun about original songs i don't think i've i don't think i've ever 
played those at a gig. <laughs> uh, besides maybe like a jazz kind of thing that I came up with or something. Nothing with words. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Word, when it, when you start having to do words for pieces, that's when that's when you really feel kind of exposed and like, hey, I made this. <laughs> yeah. And there's words, you know. Instrumental. I guess I have played stuff that I have. Yeah. I guess I, I write instrumental songs. Sure. I have like three. So uh, I have played those before in live situations. But nobody knows that I wrote them. So, you know, it's not such a personal thing. It's just could be a cover. Yeah. I don't I, know. What was the question? <laughs> which, which one do I like doing? Just, well, just, you know, thoughts. And because there, there's. Yeah, some, there's a. Yeah, pros and cons. Uh, with a cover, though, uh, that can be really cool if. Especially if you're. You're doing it in a kind of a different way or a way people haven't heard before. Or maybe it's a song that like a lot of people in your audience will know, but they like forgot about. And mm-hmm. if you can bring it back. Or a song that they didn't like <laughs> yeah. or they hated. And you're like, you know what? We're going to make you like this song. And just we're going to do it right or just do it in a new way. And that's a really cool feeling when people say, you know, I always hated that song because I heard it so much when I was in middle school or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, gee, you really put a new spin on... Uh, you know, I'm blue, wabu dee, wabu die, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a different song, but yeah. Maybe not. That's Maybe what that not. should be <laughs> <laughs> a very acoustic, soulful cover yeah. of that. Well, I, I think too. There's there's some there's some times where all of those things sort of overlap. Um, yeah. I mean, I know that just as a when we get booked as a band, it's going to be like, well, you can you're allowed to play like no covers or or one cover. Or oh right, right. You yeah, have to play all original or. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, who's to say that improvising over a certain chord profession isn't an original piece or whatever? So, yeah. I don't know. The, just, but it's, I think too, like, I, I mean, I play drums mostly when I'm gigging. So, almost everything I do is a cover. Like, I couldn't go out and necessarily play a solo drum set gig. With, with mean, just you? As an yeah. Set? yeah. I mean, maybe. But people, uh, buskers do that all the time. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I've got to find the right venue. Usually, I, it's underground and <laughs> somewhere that smells weird in New York City. But and there's trains and <laughs> rats. And yep. Barry sax players. Oh yes. Um, no, I, I just that's that to me because just I've been I've been really thinking about the sort of gigging lifestyle um, since I came back from my trip. I've really been leaning into the freelancing thing. Um, and so those those thoughts have definitely been on my mind. <clears throat> um, I will pretty much, I will almost take anything. Um, I don't. Yep. I mean, there there are things that I prefer to do, but that's why we love you, John Patty. <laughs> I mean, because I I'm I looked this week at like stuff that I've been doing, and I think I posted about you know driving all over the place um, recently, and I was thinking, man, okay, I went and. I, I teach down in sort of the Katy area, um, and I'm teaching like six different instruments at all different skill levels. Um, it's just, it's, you know, there's that. And then I, I go, uh, last couple of mornings I've had this, um, you know, we do a thing and I'm, I'm hoping to have Amanda on soon, uh, a, a program called Rocket Rocket. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's one of the yeah. Do so we gotta you use it. On the rocket, rocket, clap, clap. That's the theme song. That's the theme song. Yeah. Oh golly, so great. Um, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna talk with Amanda a little bit more. Me and Ben will get into it a little bit. Um, we were sort of on the ground floor of uh, helping create that with Amanda and uh, her husband Josh. And then I would like drive to my buddy's house to play in in, the, in a rock band in zero detail um, we've got a tour coming up and we've got some shows and I play uh, you know songs like Possum Kingdom and um, anything by Led Zeppelin and you know we're just it's a very different style of music um, and then, then I come home and I'm writing like percussion ensembles and, and <laughs> choir pieces um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, getting back into marching band, you know, I see a, an update video and I'm like, okay, I have to, you know, I'm thinking I've, I got to give notes and, you know, sort of help the production along. Uh, and it's just, I don't think I've turned anything down for like a long time. <laughs> I think I've been doing pretty much everything that comes my way. Do you ever, do you ever have to turn anything down? 
Uh, every once in a while, when you're like, holy cow, I'm actually doing stuff. Yeah. And I don't, I actually don't have time to, to do any of this other stuff. I was, in a, I was in a play this summer, well, a musical where that two actors and they both had to play the keyboard. It's called Murder for Two, or they had to play a piano. And uh, yeah. that was, you know, Wednesday night through through Sunday afternoon. With pretty solid there for gigging times. Still got in some Thursday lunch day gigs. That was John, but uh, oh, yeah. that was I was pretty swamped. Had to you know not play with as many cover bands and, and original bands as I will occasionally play with. Yeah. <laughs> People came up and were like, "Hey, are you uh, are you available for this gig?" You know, I was like, "No." People from Cafezo or something. Yeah, like Cafezo is uh, like they do a jazz night where you can just bring your instrument and kind of jam, and it's a great place for people to you know get your number and be like hey we need a bass player or a keyboard player or something and so i was doing less of that and more of this this play this summer which was fun uh yeah uh church gigs people <laughs> want me to play at different churches but there's only you know it's only so many hours on sunday morning i, I mm -hmm. do i do two <laughs> but yeah one of them is the you know the church i go to that i'm actually a member of and the other one is right before that i go and play uh hammond organ at the Methodist Church, which is which is super fun because they do a really big variety of music, like black gospel music to you know contemporary, more rock and roll sounding Christian stuff, hmm. and uh, get to figure out how to use a Hammond for <laughs> all of those styles, which is which can be really fun. It's like a real Hammond, like a it's actually not. It's made by the Hammond Company, but it's not. It doesn't have tone wheels spinning around inside it, uh, or an actual Leslie. It's it's their latest and greatest electronic uh, oh, okay. emulation of the Hammond. But it has their same you know keys and all the physical stuff is pretty much built the same way, which is which is really fun. Yeah, right on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, that's that's time. I think of course is a huge yep. factor. Um, <laughs> mental well-being mental well-being <laughs> another factor <laughs> well, that's and that's that was like uh because you know there's gigs that you you have to turn down there's other stuff you're you're doing right but, um there's ones that you don't necessarily have to turn down but you're like i think i i think i'm not going to do that yeah, gonna, at least this month <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna sleep this week mm -hmm. and then maybe i'll do that next time if you still need <laughs> um you know that's i have not that's just i I've just been able to make time for everything. I don't know what I would. I don't know what I would do if someone asked me, and I didn't. You know, like I had the time, but I like maybe didn't want to or had other stuff going on outside of like gigging. Yeah, gotta have rest days. Yeah. yeah, I think I probably would. I think I would probably pass it up at this point, just because like I don't know. I'm doing well. I'm doing okay. Like with consistent weekly gigs, to where the the extra fun stuff is. I have the option. It's nice to have the yeah, option. Yeah, have the option, exactly. Um, so you, you mentioned the play. Um, yeah. Well, that one. was one of the most entertaining things I've ever seen. Uh -huh. um, and but most, of, most of it was, I think, because like I knew you, but it's, it's a great show and it was done very, very well. Um, I got to be in it for like 40 seconds, so that <laughs> was really neat. Um, but what's... What, Tell me your thoughts about uh, you know just musicals in general or that show or theater. Oh yeah, well I, I uh, was in three uh, after school production plays when I was in high school, <laughs> my senior year. I was in The Wizard of Oz and Tom Sawyer and Beauty and the Beast, where they taught me how to sing with vibrato, so I could nice. be guest on and actually sound like a like a baritone. <laughs> so very important for my, my musical development. Uh, but yeah, so I've, and then I was in like operas and stuff in college and the occasional murder mystery dinner theater that the honors college put on to like raise money or something. And, uh, other than that, I guess I've directed kids theater, uh, Christian youth theater around the Woodland Spring mm -hmm. general Houston area. Uh, and either been the music director and tried to get the kids to all sing at the same time, you know? <laughs> Honestly, I care more about rhythm than pitch, you know, as long as the rhythm's right. Usually the pitch will just kind of follow on its own <laughs> with kids. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, and, or, you know, directing the shows or something. But I hadn't really been in a play except for one community theater production in 2015 of Bye Bye Birdie, I think, in Conroe. I think it was 2015. That was really fun. Uh, until somebody from 
the Rocket Rocket Band, which we were talking about earlier, said, hey, they asked me to audition for a show. They need keyboard players, and he could play keyboard very well, but he was going to be in another show. He's going to be in a tour, so he couldn't do it. And he said, I'm sending them your number. Go audition. So I did, and I got in the show, interestingly, with a guy named Trace Poole, who's awesome, who also worked around the rocket rocket crowd of people mm -hmm. just in a different capacity but we were all co-workers at one point and so yeah small world and you never know like you can have a weird job that doesn't pay you a whole lot or something like that you go do it like a restaurant or something but from that job somebody will say hey we're having a baby shower at my friend's house and we need live music there and you never know we're gonna find some work basically yeah that's a long way of saying that so i was in the show you know what's funny is i've never really okay one time i was in like a pit for a show when they did uh godspell and i was in like the rock band for mm -hmm. that but other than that i've never actually i this was the first time like playing music for like paid theater but i was one of the actors which mm -hmm. was which was funny so the show doesn't have an orchestra, it's just these two guys, and they take turns playing the piano or play a duet at the same time. And it's basically a spoof of murder mysteries, where the other guy's a detective and I was playing all the suspects. <laughs> so just kind of run around the stage and pretend to be different people. He turns and says, and what about you, Mrs. So-and-so? And then you have to run over there and pretend to be that person. So yeah, no intermission, just like 90 minutes of running around and singing and staying on the stage pretty much the whole time. So that was great. I lost like 15 pounds <laughs> over yeah. the summer. It's an intense show. It's yeah. just, it's. And I had to read music again <laughs> to, learn, <laughs> to learn the score. I was like, okay, all right, let's see. The sharps stay sharp for the whole measure. Oh yeah, they don't have to mark those every time. Okay. Just like all the basic stuff coming back to me. Because uh, most of my gigs are, you know, they give you a chord sheet or you know, Nashville numbers or something. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, Or just say, listen to this YouTube video and play it so yeah i do stuff by ear i guess you drum a lot kind of by ear i mean nobody do people say that for drummers even uh is that a thing that's getting back into teaching that's something i've actually been yeah. because a lot of a lot of my students are like well i heard this on the radio and i'm playing uh -huh. it this way i'm like okay well you're playing it very very wrong <laughs> and i mean that's that's part of it because if you play by ear you have to have a good ear you have to have a developed ear yeah. one of the things to me that helps you develop an ear is being able to read through music and detect mm -hmm. patterns and create those patterns so that you can more readily recognize them oh um, yeah i agree yeah probably for as long as people have been doing that kind of thing i would say it's almost i would say it's just it's at least half if not more people playing by ear um a lot of people with really great ears um yeah and you can you can get by that way um especially since there's not there's not typically like a pitch component <laughs> if it's the wrong pitch um you know i tune my tom wrong but <clears throat> i mean like there are like me like i'm i'm one of those per drummers or percussionists that like <laughs> i will actually go in like okay the whole set is in e flat minor i'm probably going to tune my toms in nice, in nice. there somewhere um you know Sometimes the John Patty difference. I mean, I don't know. I, I got where did I get that from? I don't even know. Like none of my teachers were really. It's like happy. a jazz band thing, isn't it? Like yeah, that. yeah. It's just I guess it's you know from watching those guys. Um, my buddy, my buddy Dan Dufour's uh, super super talented, uh, uh, accomplished and now prolific drummer. Um, I went to to Sam Houston with him, and he's off in Austin playing drums, but. Um, you know, we, what I guess is when I was tuning marching drums, I was like, oh, maybe my drum set should also be tuned <laughs> to pitches and sound good as yeah. well. Um, <clears throat> but I, um, I, I don't know. I'd like to be able to do both. And I think if you're going to play like theater, cause I've, I've played, um, I played a bunch of shows, yeah. um, in the, in the pit and I've played some from percussion books. But I've also played some from piano books. Like there was no percussion. Oh, book. There was no drum. You said to look at the look at the rhythm and mm -hmm. say, okay, that would fit. And so if, if had I listened to, just listened to it, I may not have caught any of the cues. And that's another like with theater, mm -hmm. you can listen to it all you want. But what if you're not playing something in a way that's been recorded before? Right. You got to read the 
the roadmap of oh this we're stuck in a vamp here until the actor you know finds their mark on the stage yeah. or something and starts singing yeah, yeah. And, and you know what if the kid isn't there what if the cast is different and the other cast doesn't even have that character you're listening for a cue line that may not be there if you're not reading yeah. something <laughs> Um, and so I've done plenty of shows where I've listened for a cue line that never did come. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if the kid on stage is nine and, oh, yeah. you know, they're backstage yeah. picking their nose and like, oh, am I supposed to be out? It's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, but no, I, I, I think it's good to have all, all of those skills. Yeah. Um, my students, I always, I always try to kind of get everything in there at once. Um, music literacy is really, really important. Uh, being able to read whether or not that's what you do most of the time right and it, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be reading stuff the rest of your life uh, just the ability like the literacy of you know having studied something or looked at it and taken apart you know some kind of drum beat or something mm -hmm. you'll be able to then when you're doing stuff by ear and you can hear it you'll be like okay i've already you know, put my time in on this so I, I can do this without a problem and add stuff to it to make it sound like whatever it needs to sound like mm -hmm. at the time. So it's like literacy is super important just for like, I guess the familiarity with basic like styles and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the same for, same for keyboard for piano. And, you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta read it first. <laughs> yeah. I took lessons like, I guess all the way through high school piano lessons. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of the time I was just, I guess, developing my ear accidentally by just mm -hmm. trying to play things from movies and what have you. Uh, but yeah, I'm really glad that I sort of learned both sides of that. Oh, yeah, I'm, I will say this um, before, I, before I move on. There's a, the, um, with Zero Detail, we've kind of put together a list of covers, which I think is it's the second strangest collection of music, second only to the thing that I'm also doing with Ben. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Where they said they sent an office email or something that was suggest any songs that you guys want to hear, and I don't think they knew what band was going to be there or <laughs> that it was a keyboard player and a drum player because they were like, "Do Are You Experienced by Jimi Hendrix and uh, do the rap song from Hamilton?" And so like we got this list of so many different songs and genres that are like uh, we could just do it all jazz piano style and <laughs> kind of make it coherent yeah country rock band style I, yeah, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I was like for that um, that's that's an eclectic list there when you just ask everyone for their favorite song yeah <laughs> yeah and so I'm, I'm listening to that I'm not gonna try to find sheet music for no, no. I mean some of that stuff I'm gonna print have. out the lyrics for, for I'm gonna have to have the lyrics printed out I think for a lot of that it sounds like some of it didn't even have drums in it. <laughs> I was like, was like <laughs> there's a, a piece of a song, tune from a musical, and I'm like, oh, it's fine. It's but that's yeah, we'll do that on like a lounge drum <laughs> kind of thing. Is what we'll do. Yeah, it'll be great. I mean, we should probably we should like stream some of that. Just yeah, we can. This is like the most eclectic mix of music you've ever heard live. <laughs> the strangest part. I just want to see how many people just walk by confused. <laughs> that's like piano bar stuff man that's uh when they start like asking the room what they want to hear like if you go on a cruise ship and hang out by the piano and they have a guy whose job is to basically literally do that <laughs> <laughs> play free bird yep oh, instrument. that yeah. is fun when you see a band and they'll have like the the list of songs that they will not do for requests that they're like we take requests but not these and have like a sign <laughs> Yeah, this piano bar guy had that. He's like, "Sorry, don't do that one. Don't do that one. It's on my list." <laughs> on this cruise island. That's fun. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Well, um, so you mentioned the other thing. I was fascinated to hear your thoughts on uh, about the uh, the interpersonal relationships. People, people you meet. You know you. You got a gal. Oh yeah, yeah. I have a girlfriend now. Her name's Kelsey. She's super cool, and uh, she's not like in the music industry in any way whatsoever, which everybody is kind of shocked by, because like, <laughs> you know, all my friends are musicians. Uh, hang out with musicians. Go to church with musicians. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of 
musicians in my life. A lot, of, all of my brothers are musicians in one way or another. Uh, so when we have family reunions, it's just like, uh, you know, reunion band tour or something <laughs> for the Miller brothers. Uh, so yeah, uh, I met this girl actually. She like saw the play that I was in and started. You know, we were friends on Facebook then and uh, or Instagram or something. Anyway, yeah, we're dating now, and she is a pastry chef. She makes cookies and cakes and does it, like, full-time at intense speeds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to watch her do stuff because it's, just like, super fast and efficient. And I was like, wow, you wrapped up that cake in saran wrap. It, it didn't have frosting on it. And just, like, so I could take it home. And she did it, like, super fast and knew, like, all the, the right sizes of stuff to do. And she's like, yep. She's like, this is how it is when I watch you play music. I don't really know how you're doing it, but it's really cool and it looks really <laughs> fast and stuff. Or we were hanging out and what's that store where it's like we have all the chef stuff, like the professional chef store? You know, uh, it's like in the fancy malls. Is it, oh golly, like OXO or something? Is that, I know that's a brand, but I don't know. It was think something, it was, it's just one of those like professional kitchen stores that you walk in and everything's too expensive, but you look at it. <laughs> And you're like, wow, one day I will get a knife that will actually cut things without me hurting myself. <laughs> one day. Yeah. So she's like looking at stuff and being like, oh, I could get this. Oh, I found this for a better price somewhere. And we're standing in some aisle and she's like, I just realized, you probably don't know what any of this stuff is. <laughs> All right. And I was like, uh, I, I think I know what those rolling pins are for, but other than that, no, I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> we're just looking at stuff. She's like, this is how I would be in a guitar center. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, this is basically her guitar center where you wander in and look at stuff and pretend like you're rolling out cookies with it and like <laughs> test out the weight of different things. Be like, okay, I could see myself using this. In fact, they even had like cooking classes in the back where I guess you, I guess that's like jamming in the back of a guitar center with people. Mm. It's like, oh, okay, it's like a little cooking class back there. So you can test out stuff, see if you want to buy it or not. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, this is like a guitar center, which is where I wander around and say, wow, one day maybe I'll buy this but maybe I'll just come in here and play it for like, you know, months first. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you were Yep. Have you ever been at a music store and been playing an instrument and then you hear somebody else playing something and you're like, oh, I'm going to try to match what they're doing and you have like this awkward jam session and you're not <laughs> sure if they can even hear you or if they're into it or if they're being creeped out? There was one time, <laughs> so there, there has been only one time, um, because if you ever if you ever go to the drum area of uh, Guitar Center, it's to, it's usually separate from everything else, so you can't really hear any guitars or anything, and it's usually like forty three drum sets in five feet of space, and so you kind of can't help but hear at least hear, um, but you can kind of tell too, like if you walk in and the person at the kit like looks up and greets you, it's usually something. Like, oh, maybe this is not going to be this weird hostile thing where I'm going to try to play blast beats louder. <laughs> the one time, though, I did have this, um, a dude was, was playing something and I sat down at the kit next, like two, two kits down. And there was somebody like next to me on an electronic kit. Yeah. And all three of us were playing at the same time. <laughs> Did it sound good? Were you guys it like grooving? It sounded really good. Oh, that's awesome. It was really cool. And it wasn't, like, it wasn't too loud. That's one thing, like... When I'm playing Guitar Center, yeah, um, and I don't play very loud anyway. <laughs> like I, I have been told to play out more than anything else. Like, you need to play louder here, and I'm like, oh, well, I'm not going to, so you can relax. Um, but if if you see somebody like in a Guitar Center who's playing like a tasteful, reasonable level, instead of just like the loudest thing that everyone's ever heard, um, you can kind of tell like, oh, this person might be kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I saw the students like just landed tasty groove kind of trying out cymbals and toms that were laid out there and I was like alright let's do it cool yeah this happened to me like a few times or somebody across and you're not yeah, I'm never really sure because I play kind of I don't want to turn anything up too loud but I'm like maybe they can hear me maybe we're going off each other here on some <laughs> keyboard thing and somebody's like hitting a drum or something yeah that's fine just spontaneous spontaneous stuff like that I would love if they had just like a pickup band room just like a keyboard a couple of guitars a bass and a drum set or two People would just walk in and be like, hey, this is like specifically for right, right, right. jam time. There you go. There's, <laughs> there's some venues that kind of do that around here. Yeah, cafes. Are <laughs> yeah. Well, with um, 
with you know with your relationships were you were you looking for someone specifically that wasn't in music or no no not at all this is just like total spontaneous kind of thing but uh yeah no i mean it it's kind of i think there's some like advantages or nice things about having two jobs that are kind of different <laughs> yeah <laughs> or whatever is so you want to be like oh you know uh trying to get into the same jobs like you know like in a chorus line of that musical where like there's like the couple and they're trying to both be in the same show auditioning because mm. they're both actors like that must be rough because like what if one of you gets hired and the other one doesn't and then, yeah. Uh, yeah that'd be kind of awkward I mean if people do it make it work really really well and it's like no problem at all but uh I don't know I just thought it was I just thought it was kind of interesting uh yeah Let's see, work-life balance. It turns out like people go on dates and eat dinner. See, I haven't like dated anyone in like seven years, so <laughs> it's all coming back to me though. Yeah, so, like you go out and eat dinner and stuff, and that's like when you're supposed to be like playing music and making money, right? <laughs> so it's like, oh, I can only do like one thing at a time. I have to start choosing things. Oh, this is interesting. Maybe I, maybe I should, you know, make sure I leave time for that and stuff. So. That's kind of fun, but you know, it's, it's tricky, but it's worth it, worth it to get some, get some good loving. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I agree, and I, it's, you know, I've, I've dated who, people who weren't musicians before, and I don't know, I don't, that, I'm, I'm still on the fence, because a lot of, a lot of people say, well, don't, don't date inside the industry, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, just, how about, just like, let, let things happen and if it yep, works turns out because my my girlfriend valerie is a is a musician but i wouldn't say that we do any of the same things in the music <laughs> industry not right. not even one i haven't found one that overlaps other than That's like awesome. social media right like i'm you know percussion sort of voice a little bit of brass and she's very very much strings she plays violin oh. she works at a string shop um she teaches violin lessons um, we don't, like when I show her things that I'm doing, she's just like, you know, just like I'm sure, um, Kelsey is with you. It's like, oh, this is really cool. I have no idea what's going on, but I like is, it. But I like it. Yeah. Um, or you know, me with cooking. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Exactly. You know, she'll show me something that, um, <laughs> you know, that they're doing at the, at the shop or on a violin. And I'm like, I mean, I've, stu I've actually studied some of what she does, um, as a composer and yeah. I'm like, I know that it's possible, but I know I. Other than that, I don't know how it's possible. I don't know how you're doing what you're doing right now. Uh, and I don't know. I think we can we can relate some of those things to. We have a passion that that mm -hmm. is yeah. guiding what we do, um, but it doesn't really overlap in a in a daily way. And I think yeah. that's advantageous mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, uh, let's see here. What. What is next for you? Are you, are you auditioning for shows? Are you looking I've, for a band? I've, there's like a few shows I've auditioned for and haven't heard back yet. And they're about to start rehearsals like in a few weeks. So I'm like, I guess I didn't make it. Hmm. Maybe I did. Sometimes you never know. You never get the the thanks but no thanks email because like they forgot. So I don't know. You're going to have to check in on that. But <laughs> well, I've heard of a couple people in the last I don't know, two or three years that have been like, they, they get a call like the second week of rehearsal and like hey where are you uh, and oh or hey we need you yeah. there's another thing that happens a lot yeah it's like well you didn't tell me that I got it you also didn't tell me that I didn't get it oh, the other guy dropped out so yeah I wasn't just gonna show up and be like yeah okay. so I mean I might go into more of a theater direction depending on if I get that or maybe just more gigs you know start the great American music project <laughs> With, you know, John Patty and everybody and uh, go on tour or something. Who knows? I, I don't know. My brother Thomas, who works as a actor, singer, dancer in an equity show at Disney World, is always trying. He's like, there's a piano bar out here. You can come <laughs> play a piano bar. They don't do any, you know, weird body songs because it's Disney, so you'd like it. <laughs> so, Oh. He's like, this is the one piano bar in the world where <laughs> the you can do family one. friendly stuff. And I'm like, oh, that does sound kind of fun. So he's always trying to get me to go out there and 
I guess, I don't know if they do auditions or what, but he just wants me to like near that piano bar to just go in there and talk to someone. So uh, one day, maybe that would be fun. And then I'd be closer to my one of my nephews. <laughs> uh, that's, where is it? Florida? Yeah, it's it's I, technically outside of like the Disney World parks, but it's at, like a Disney World kind of area. Uh. It's called, he's like, it's called Jelly Rolls. I don't know why. I'm like, probably <laughs> Jelly Roll Morton. He's like, see, you know why. You know why it's named that. Good job there, man. Oh, that would be cool. But that's and that's fun. So my brother Thomas is in the Finding Nemo musical. He's been in like a you know touring musical before and done a lot more theater than I did in my life. Studied it at Texas State. And so he sings as, you know, Crush the Turtle. He's on a giant Crush the Turtle puppet. But you can also... <laughs> In the musical, you can either watch the puppets or watch the people controlling the puppets because they're all acting. It's like this double thing going on, which is pretty cool. Huh. Kind of a unique concept, especially at a theme park <laughs> where it's more like just dance around like mascots, right? This is an actual like, you know, Broadway show style kind of show. So he's doing that. He's filling in for some sharks and other fish. And uh, <laughs> he's also an auxiliary Dapper Dan, which is the barbershop quartet that sings on Main Street in the Magic Kingdom. So he fills in uh, when people have to take off from that barbershop quartet. So I'm, I keep waiting for like a day when I can go out there when he is filling in for someone. Yeah. I'm thinking like January or something because Christmas is going to be crazy to go see him do all his jobs. My brother Daniel just got a job and a tour, which he doesn't want anyone to say what it is. Yeah. So I guess I won't. <laughs> but it's a Broadway tour and, and he's going to be traveling around. Uh, and singing and dancing on a stage. And then my brother Andrew is a physicist. He got his PhD and he's working at Sandia Labs doing quantum computing. Uh, but he still you know, plays the bass. And <laughs> when I went to visit him and, and his wife and the, and the nephew, uh, he got out his bass and we jammed with this little portable organ thing uh, while his kid danced around and hit buttons on the looper. All right. <laughs> it was fun. He actually started figuring out what things were. like. He started turning on and off, like the drums, like at interesting times. Oh. And I was like, "Oh, he's getting this. He's three years old, but he was he figured out how to start and stop stuff on it." That's cool. And that's I was a, like, that's... there you go. He's never too young to. You've seen the synthesizer they made for like it's like designed for like two to three year olds or something. I mean, it's like six hundred bucks, so most people probably will never buy it. But it's like, it looks like a like a little tent kind of thing with buttons on either side of it and you set it on a table or on a floor and you control one side and the other person controls the other side. Oh, wow. And it's like just basic knobs and controls but kind of like modular synthesis yeah. kind of stuff. And it's like everybody, on every video I've ever seen of it, everybody's like, you know, forget the kids. Like, I just want to play this <laughs> with my friends but it's kind of expensive. But yeah, early childhood and music, That's that's a preview for... The next the next podcast with uh, with Fascinante when we'll oh talk, yeah talk about the Rocket Rocket Band and sure. what that actually did we actually say what that was no no we can we can do that no it's, it, <laughs> we might it's, as well it's it's a f super fascinating thing um, in my opinion a very well done very well written uh, it's really a show that's how I describe it to people uh, it's an interactive musical kind of uh, education based thing um, yeah kind of like a like a being in a kids TV show but in real life and live and happening in front of you yeah I think that's 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 actually perfect there's there's characters um, yep. some puppets and yeah there's there's puppets there's uh, the interactive part um, there's uh, musical instruments and so and literally, it is just a, a lot of times just a bucket of whatever instrument we're doing that week, and she just kind it's of pours castanets. it on the children. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, like castanets and egg shakers, um, all stuff to to sort of promote movement, but without any sort of training. Like it doesn't matter um, <laughs> if they're good, it's right? It's percussion, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, and that's but that's one of the cool things about the thing is like every kid, no matter what, whether they like the music, whether they mm -hmm are learning to speak or not, or whether they're uh, ambulatory or not, um, they're able to just pick up a tambourine or an egg shaker or a, a frog and just kind of frog weirdo. scrape it with a stick. Um, but uh, I don't know, that, that to me is kind of a, it's kind of a fun story how, how it all came together. Yeah. Um, 
it's fun to, to play in that band as a musician because uh, they, they keep things pretty much there's a lot of stuff that's the same every week like the same rocket launching song things like that oh we're going to this planet it's all the same which kids like because they like that repetition and the mm-hmm. familiarity it's why they you know watch the same VHS over and over and over again uh, but then there's the differences that we do a different genre for cover songs every week and so it'll be like disco genre southern rock genre week uh, we did a Bollywood kind of week once or something <laughs> like Indian music uh, I don't know if we're going to try that again, but it was, <laughs> but it, it, uh, there's been so many times when I've been playing with like a random group of people or something like, for example, on a cruise ship <laughs> where they're like, ah, it's getting late and you know, it's getting pretty chill. And they're like, why don't you come on up and play our keyboard with us, with our band? Cause you said you played keyboard earlier when we were talking and you know, maybe, yeah, they had a few drinks and oh, why not invite people up on stage to play instruments? <laughs> what could go wrong? And they're playing some song. I'm like, I only know this because of playing it with the Rocket Rocket when we did, <laughs> you know, we played the Stevie Ray Vaughan song. That's the only reason I know what this song is. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun because you, you get a good musical vocabulary of style and sensibilities. Yeah. Yes, it's a it's a it's a weekly thing, um, and I think some a big part of it is just the, the people involved. Amanda and Josh are awesome. Um, they you know they wrote that thing basically from top to bottom. When we were we were um, sort of playing a different program earlier, um, that it just we uh, sort of based some of that stuff on on uh, the previous program that we were using, but. Really, it is just, it's all like original, completely original ideas um, that we like rehearsed and there was scripts and, um, <laughs> and chord charts and, you know, lead sheets. It was, it was really cool. It was, it was very yeah, much was like cool. writing a very short musical um, with a very specific uh-huh. skill. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. um, we're going to, we're hoping to sort of ramp that up in the next couple of weeks. So if you have any... And I get to see John, you know, like every week, which is great. <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping there's that someday someone records like, records like the rhythm section, um, <laughs> the back line. Because we're kind of, I don't know, I th- we ham it up a little bit. <laughs> it's just, it's hard. Like the kids are over there being silly, and it's hard to not, it's hard to keep a straight face and be like, this is drums, this is very serious. Right. It's like, oh, that one of the kids, you know just did a backflip off the wall or something it's it's really fun the joy of music and children all combined yep yeah it's a good feeling well coming up on two hours now I think so I just I've been recording in Logic that's actually it's one hour and I don't that's like track one oh or I was like it feels like it's only been about an hour yeah um I don't know. I've I've been I've been kind of messing with gear um, lately, gear and software, um, and I've s- sort of switched from GarageBand and Audacity uh, to Logic just because I know it's got a little bit more power. Um, you know, I've been doing a little bit more podcasting stuff and um, also kind of started to throw videos together. Um, but yeah, this this stuff is complicated it's a huge steep learning curve uh, and I'm, I'm sitting here looking at the at the file and it clearly yeah. looks like it's two hours mm. this is zero one five six you know 38 seconds or whatever and it's uh, mm-hmm. I don't know what that one is just like oh, I guess they'll mess it up <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> uh, well do you want to just do you want to play do you want to yeah we should play something okay now play us out tonight here. <laughs> what does that mean to play us out you know um, that's from uh no what's it from all right for anyone watching this who wants to watch like someone have a meltdown <laughs> on the internet there's a really great clip of uh i guess it's bill o'reilly on the o'reilly factor and he's supposed to say sting is gonna like play a song from his new album to play us out and he's like what does it what does it mean play us out and and then he starts yelling at people <laughs> Oh. It never aired, I guess, but it was. It's where the "We'll do it live." We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Comes yeah. Out. And so whenever somebody says, "Yeah, we'll do that to play us out," I'm like, "What, what does that mean to play us out?" <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's horrible. I mean, it's, it's it's very 
nasty sounding and, and yelling and abusive kind of kind of language but <laughs> it is fun to see like i don't know people who do professional things are like oh they're <laughs> dealing with all the same stress that you are and you, you can't get your gear to work at some gig and, you yeah know, it's kind of fun to watch somebody just vent i guess <laughs> <laughs> well it's i mean it's bill but, o'reilly he, he's, he's yeah yeah he's he, he might have some emotional maybe more emotionally <laughs> Prone, prone to that sort of thing. <laughs> I remember the I remember the we'll do it live part, but I, yes. I didn't ever have the context. For play us out. What, what does that mean to play us out? <laughs> Who wrote the script? <laughs> the script sucks. Yeah. All right. Okay, what are you going to play? Uh, I may go get my melodica. Melodica, okay. So there should be a picture, but we have the Yamaha uh, Reface YC, which is a little miniature version of their combo organ. And when I saw this thing online, I was like, who is going to pay that much money for a miniature version of a combo <laughs> organ that only does organ sounds, no piano sound, no synth, nothing like that. And then I figured out, I'm like, it's me. I am the target audience for this machine. Because <laughs> I can take it in a car trip or to a gig and, or wherever. Play it in the car. Is that, yeah. is that the one you jumped on stage with Zero yeah. Detail? With? Yep, I play with Zero Detail. Also, it's fun. I take this to, um, to other people's shows and take pictures of them playing it. So I have like a picture of Corey Henry from Corey Henry and the Funk Apostles or uh, Snarky Puppy, a lot of great bands. Yeah. Uh, a picture of him playing this keyboard and I'm like holding it up for him to play. <laughs> uh, Jacob, uh, oh shoot, what's that guy's name? The guy in Nowhere, is it Jacob? Oh, Jacob oh. Mann, Jacob Mann. Uh, actually held and played this keyboard. So I'm just like having, I'm like, could you guys just lay your hands on this and like bless this instrument? <laughs> Lewis Cole, Lewis, that's the guy. Lewis he, Cole. He, yes, he has played one of the keys. He just kind of like played one key and held it up and then handed it back to me. Nice. It was awesome. So that's, that's another great thing to have a small <laughs> version of your instrument is you can just have celebrities, you know, lay their hands upon it I have to get me a little baby drum set little baby drum set it's, it's like, smaller than the one I have already somehow yeah I'm gonna go get my uh, melodica here we go Yeah. <laughs> 